Hey guys, Scarlett here. I hope you all are doing well today. So I have a tarot deck haul for you. And this is a super exciting deck haul because these are the decks that I got in Japan. And when I was traveling abroad, I wanted to kind of keep an eye out for tarot decks, but I wasn't entirely sure I would be able to find any decks in Japan just because tarot is not as popular in Japan as it is here in the States and in Europe. Um, I did go to uh, several different bookstores because that's probably like the best shot <laughs> at trying to find tarot decks and I went to this really great district in Tokyo. I think it's called um, Jimbocho that is known as like the book district and it had a lot of like really cool used bookstores, um, some really unique shops and earlier I had looked to see if there were any like occult specific shops in Tokyo and I didn't really find much so I figured going to this book district might be my best chance and one of the stores indeed did have a little section dedicated towards tarot and divination so I went a little crazy I mean not too crazy but I did get four different decks um, from my trip so I wanted to share these with you and it was interesting to see that they had a pretty wide range of the traditional tarot decks um, so for example they had the Rider Waite Smith deck they had the Marseille deck they had even some more like um, contemporary tarot decks that are popular here. But what I was really looking for is something that I could get in Japan that you couldn't really get here. Because any type of Western style deck, well, I can, I can buy that, you know, at my local occult shop or from Amazon. And I wanted to find something that was a bit more unique. And that's why I ended up deciding on these four decks. And actually what I do have is I have two oracle decks and then I have a tarot deck and this is actually um, for geomancy so this one's a little bit different and I'll show you each of the decks and why I chose to get that particular deck and we'll start with uh, the two oracle decks and I saw these two decks and the design and the artwork was just kind of very visually striking right off the bat. Now I do read some Japanese. I took um, Japanese in college for a while and I studied abroad in Japan when I was in college, but still even with that, when it comes to understanding this deck and understanding the guidebook, I'm definitely going to need to be using a good amount of Google Translate. Um, so this deck does come with a guidebook. And what this deck basically is, is each card represents a different spirit in Japanese folklore. So some of them are more kind of um, minimalist, like this simple spiral. This actually reminds me of um, one of my favorite manga, which is Uzumaki, <laughs> The Spiral. It's actually a horror manga. Um, I do have a review of that on my blog from a couple years ago. If you are a fan of horror or Japanese horror, definitely check that out. Um, so each card has the image of the particular Japanese spirit and then their name here. Um, so some of them are just really beautiful. I love the artwork. It's very bright, it's very cheerful. Um, and what's great about this deck is by going through this deck and um, translating the guidebook, I'll be able to reconnect with my study of Japanese language and also reconnect with the folklore there, which is extremely rich. Um, very fascinating to me so this I think was a, a really good find and this artist too I'll put the name of this deck in the comments so it might be possible to find this one online so I'll definitely link it if I can find it in the comments down below and then the backs are in green with this simple design here so this is the oracle duck card deck for Japanese spirits I'm really excited about working with this one and since I am you know fairly new to, to being back here in the States I haven't had much time to work 
with these decks so maybe I'll update you guys later on how I am liking this particular deck um, so my other deck here which I got in the smaller size and this one also came in the larger size but you know it was getting kind of expensive so I decided to get the smaller size for this particular deck and this is the gods and the goddesses of Japan and so this one is Japanese spirits and then this one is the gods and goddesses and if you caught my um, video I posted about a week ago about Shinto which is the native religion of Japan so Japan does have um, or through Shinto and even through Buddhism there are a kind of a wide amount of various gods and goddesses in fact they say that the power of the emperor comes from Amaterasu who is a sun goddess so how cool is that that it's actually a goddess that is providing the power to the emperor and the imperial line in Japan interestingly is I'm pretty sure the only continuous line I mean that's a bit debatable but um, that single family has ruled Japan since they say you know um, the time of Amaterasu um, and the other Shinto deities so um, the understanding of gods and goddesses and nature spirits that's very much still an active part of Japanese culture though while people might might not be practicing Shinto as much they're still mostly aware of some of these deities in kind of the wider consciousness of the culture so that's really fascinating and this deck here so it's the same artist right so it's got a similar aesthetic um, tiny little guidebook here that again I'll have to work on doing some translating and then the cards themselves again feature different gods and goddesses so some are more minimalist um, maybe it's you know a river god or like for example Amaterasu being a sun goddess and um, so you kind of have this more like modern art bent with a lot of them and then some of them do show figures um, so that's kind of a neat mix of, of kind of nature and, and human representations of the different gods here. So I'm really looking forward to learning more about this deck and then again through that process getting better connected with um, the gods and goddesses within um, Shinto, within Japanese folklore and culture. So really excited about that deck as well. So that was the Gods and Goddesses of Japan Oracle deck and again I will try and find this um, to see if it is available and I'll link it in the description box below. So moving on to a uh, traditional tarot deck and this deck st stuck out to me because um, it's in this kind of like just black white and gold aesthetic something I visually am very attracted to and I think it's interesting because it is um, like anime style um, this is uh, the Maya Mineo tarot and again I will try and find this and link this below and it has that beautiful um, gold sheen to it so these are what the card backs look like and they are kind of gold and silvery and then these are what the cards look like. So for example, here is the Fool. And so it's got that black, gold, and then just a little bit of red. So kind of a more minimalist aesthetic. Um, it's interesting too, they, they also have the, um, like the playing card um, name up below. And they have that with, with all of the cards too, like in the minors. So for example, with the Eight of Swords at the bottom, you have the the um, eight of spades here so you could even kind of just take out the minors and the full card and use this as a playing card deck um, so here's the magician here I'll just show you a couple different cards what I like about the style of this deck is when it comes to anime like I like some anime but I tend to be pretty picky about the shows that I do watch and um, I like how it's just kind of subtle it's not like in your face about it it's not like stuff everywhere distracting you. The images are are very clean, um, very um, minimalist in the color scheme and they do a good job of mixing some of these kind of symbols that were associated with 
um, with a classic tarot deck like those Rider Waite style symbols, but then putting it in a bit of a more Asian context. Um, so it fits in better with Japanese culture. For example, here is the chariot and it's like a samurai and a dragon. So same concept as, you know, the chariot that you might see in a Rider Waite deck. They're just putting a bit of a different spin on it. Um, so such a fascinating deck. This might be one of my top 10 decks of the year. Um, we'll see at the end of the year if I'll do like a, a favorite decks of the year, but I think this one might show up on a list like that. Um, oh, my favorite in this one is the death card, which is actually, um, very similar to a specific, um, print, um, that is very famous in Japan. So some of these, um, styles and designs are based on famous artwork. Um, so I'm really loving this deck. Um, I love the world card here with a dragon Ouroboros. Um, that's super beautiful. And then when it comes to the minors, this is kind of a pip style so you don't get full narrative scenes. You do get a nice initial ace image, but then it breaks down into more simplistic um, images of the suit. So you have the ace of wands and then here is the Ace of Pentacles again. So all the Aces have a bit more of a detailed design, but then when you go into the um, the rest of the cards in the suits, not so much. Though you again, you do get a a nice design when it comes to the court cards. Um, so they do have traditional Page, Knight, Queen, and King. Um, so. This is a really fun deck. I'm definitely going to be using this one a lot, um, especially for some of my repeat tarot um, clients that I do readings for. Probably gonna be incorporating this deck into some of the readings I do. Um, so this one really does speak to me. And this one also comes with a little guidebook, though because it is a traditional tarot deck, it's not as difficult for me because I already know Tara, I already know like the Rider weight. Um, so I should be able to, to read with this deck just fine even without that guidebook or needing to translate anything. So I will post a link for this if I can find it in the description box. And then the last deck I got is more like a cutesy deck just because it's Japan and I kind of wanted something that was, you know, a bit kind of like kawaii, you know? And this is not a tarot deck, this is for geomancy. And I haven't talked much about geomancy, but um, it's another system of divination that, that is kind of based on binary mathematics. And let me know if you are interested in, in like a geomancy one-on-one -on -one style video in the future. Um, but basically you have like 16 characters in geomancy that's composed of like four rows of symbols and then each of the rows either has a dot or a pair of dots. And then those four rows are also associated with the four classical elements of earth, air, fire, water. So let me know if you are interested in having me chat about geomancy um, in a future video. So this one is all about cats. And those of you that, <laughs> that subscribe know that I have two cats. So I'm definitely a cat lady at heart. Um, and these are adorable. Let me zoom in here. Um, so each of them has, um, you can see the dots kind of featured there. Um, and each of them have different cat imagery. It's like super cute, um, very playful. So um, geomancy is something I'm still um, learning, something I'm still working with. It's something I find really interesting. Um, I definitely prefer tarot because I'm much more of a visual um, based person. Um, but you know, it is something that I am excited about learning more about and I'd be happy to share with you as well if you are curious about geomancy. And this also came with a little, tiny little like fold out guide here um, with all of the cards. So there's not that many cards in this particular deck. I think there might be 
like 16 or so cards. Um, but it was just kind of a fun find and I'm really excited to be working with this deck. So thank you so much for watching this short little haul about the decks that I got in Japan. Um, let me know which one was your favorite and if you have you ever traveled and like tried to find tarot decks in other countries I'd be so curious to hear your um, response. I am going to be doing another trip coming up in May. I'll be going to Scandinavia so maybe I'll try and find a Danish tarot deck, who knows? Um, it's all about the hunt and the journey. So thanks again for watching and if you are new to my channel, welcome. I post weekly videos about tarot, paganism, and magic. And if you are new here, do please hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you next week. Bye.